In this video, we'll go over 10 abilities that were in the Classic WoW's beta, but did not make it to the live version of the game, or were added to the game much later on in WoW's history. And at number 10, we have Crusader Strike and Holy Strike. Now, I've already made a whole video about these two abilities and why they were removed, so I'll keep it brief at this part. Basically, Crusader Strike was a Red Paladin ability that did damage and put a debuff on the target that increased your holy damage that would stack up to five times. And this ability had no cooldown, so it was an actual spammable ability that Red Paladins had access to. And Holy Strike was just like the Warrior's Heroic Strike, except it did holy damage. Now, after I made my video on these two abilities, a fan then linked me an interview with Kevin Jordan on a podcast, who was one of the three original game designers on the Vanilla WoW team. And in that podcast, someone asked him why Crusader Strike and Holy Strike were removed from Beta Paladins. And I'll play you an audio clip of what his answer to that question was. The, the, early, the early Beta incarnation of the Paladin was very much placeholder. A lot of the okay. early classes, sort of before they hit, you know, final testing, were had a lot of placeholder abilities. Well, he needs buttons to push while he's running around, but we're not quite ready with their full systems. So right. a lot of people just had buttons to push, right? And that's exactly what those abilities were. And once the seal and judgment system came to light, we wanted that entire system to be sort of all-inclusive. And... The previous strikes that weren't connected to that system no longer fit within that mold so they would have felt really odd you know next to all the other abilities so basically crusader strike and holy strike were just placeholder abilities and they had planned on adding the seal system which paladins eventually got the entire time they just kind of added it very late in development as the seal system wasn't implemented until about two weeks before the game went live so it was a very last second change with almost no testing at all and it wasn't a very popular DPS system. And since this change was so last second, mobs in the old school Scarlet Monastery still used the old school's Crusader Strike and Holy Strike abilities, as they were modeled after Beta Paladins. And at number nine, we have Trip. Now for some of the abilities I'm gonna talk about in this video, I don't actually know which class they belong to specifically. So I might need to make an educated guess for one or two of them. And I'm pretty sure Trip was supposed to be a rogue ability. So what this ability does is on your next weapon swing, it would trip your target, do a little bit of damage, and then award you one combo point. What the trip actually did, it never actually said, but I assumed it was some kind of stun for like a second or so. Uh, it didn't cost any energy, but the fact that it did give you a combo point is a pretty good indicator that it was supposed to be a rogue ability. And I have a little bit more confirmation to that, as the ability has the exact same icon as the Hunter ability called Wing Clip. And the name of that icon, when you look at it in the game files, is called Ability Rogue Trip. Which is a pretty clear indication that it was supposed to be a rogue ability, and it did make it into the game as an NPC ability for two mobs in the Hillsbrat Foothills and Silverpine Forest. Kind of like how there's mobs in the game who have the Beta Paladin's Crusader Strike. Although, there's not too much confirmation in patch notes that rogues had this ability, so it was most likely never actually given to them, and just kind of intended to be given to them. And at number 8, we have Thunderbolt. This was an early shaman ability with a really unique and kind of overpowered effect, because basically what it does is it literally allows you to throw your weapon at the target for nature damage, interrupt spell casting for 15 seconds, which is like three times longer than the average interrupt lockout, I might add, and then leave you unarmed the entire time this ability is airborne. Which seems kind of like Earth Shock a little bit, in that it does nature damage and interrupts, which is probably why it was never actually given to shamans. There's also a data mined item called the Tablet of Thunderbolt, which is a class ability item that requires level 32, and has the effect of teaching a shaman the ability Thunderbolt. So this one has a pretty clear indication of which class it was meant for, and the ability is very similar to Meriden's Stormbolt ability, so it seems like it could have easily been converted into a warrior ability as well, if they just removed the mana cost and made it interact with rage instead. But the ability honestly seemed kind of powerful with that super long interrupt, and Shaman's already had Earthshock as a really good interrupt, so they didn't really need Thunderbolt as well. So kind of makes sense why it was never actually added to the game. 
And also, just a little note, something I found while I was editing this video and putting the pictures together, the icon for Seal of Righteousness ability, which depicts a flying hammer, is known as Thunderbolt in the game files. This seems to be a trend amongst a lot of these abilities in the beta, never actually made into the game. They just reuse the same icon over and over without changing the name of the ability and just keep whichever ability it was originally given to. And at number 7, we have Shadow Word Befuddle. This was supposed to be a priest ability that when cast on an enemy target would befuddle them for 30 seconds, making their spells cast much slower. So it seems like it was supposed to be a priest version of Curse of Tongues. And the reason I know this was supposed to be a priest ability is the same reason I know Thunderbolt was supposed to be a shaman ability, as there's a codex in the game files called Codex of Shadow Word Befuddle, which requires a priest class to use and will teach them level 1 befuddle at level 24. It seems like it would have been neat for Priest to also have a Curse of Tongues, but overall not the biggest loss in the world that they never actually gave it to Priest. And at number 6 we have Mind Rot. This is another Priest ability which is very similar to Hunter's Viper Sting, in that it will put a dot on the target which will drain mana every time it ticks instead of dealing damage. Except Mind Rot seemed to have lasted for 30 seconds, instead of the shorter 8 seconds of Viper Sting. And just like a lot of abilities on this list, the reason I know it's a priest spell is because there's a codex in the game files that teaches this ability to priests at level 38. Now, as to why this was never added to the game, it's probably because priests already have another mana burn ability called Mana Burn. And it's reasonable to assume they didn't want to give priests two separate mana burn abilities, especially one in the form of a dot and then another in the form of a spammable cast. And a little note about the icon for Mind Rot. This icon is more commonly used for the Spell Lock ability that a Warlock's pet Fellhunter has, and the icon in the game files is still known as Mind Rot. And at number 5, we have Holy Ward. This ability would give you an absorption shield that would only absorb holy damage, very similar to Shadow Ward, Frost Ward, etc. Lots of casters in Vanilla WoW had damage shields that only worked on one type of magic. Although, there was this little distinction about holy damage specifically in Vanilla WoW, in that players could not get resistance to holy damage. It was the only type of damage which existed in the game as its own damaging type, that there was no gear that allowed you to get holy resistance. So, it would make sense that they removed holy ward, to kind of fit in line with the whole holy damage is the only damage that players can't resist mantra. And this was a warlock ability seen as there's an item in the game files called the Grimoire of Holy Ward, which allows Warlocks to train it at level 40. And since Warlocks also had Shadow Ward in Vanilla WoW, it kind of made sense that they would also have Holy Ward as well, seen as Mages had Frost and Fire Ward. But also kind of makes sense that they didn't give it to Warlocks eventually, as this seems kind of weird that a Shadow Damaging spec would have protection from Holy Damage. And then in Legion, Holy Ward was added back to the game in the form of a PvP talent for Holy Priests, and it worked nothing like its beta version, and instead kind of worked like Fear Ward, in that you placed it on a friendly target and it would prevent the next CC effect, instead of just a Fear like Fear Ward did. So it was added in the game as kind of a completely different ability, just sharing the same name. Which leads me into the next item on this list. And at number 4, we have Seal of Righteousness. Now, this ability did actually make it into Vanilla WoW, but the version that existed in the beta was completely different to what it turned into in the live version of the game. That it's basically a different ability. Because what beta Seal of Righteousness did was give a buff to a weapon for one minute, which increased the amount of damage you did to undead targets only. And this ability could be cast on other players, and also had no judgment interaction, because Judgment didn't exist in the same form as it did when it went live. So, this was a completely unique ability that Blizzard removed, kept the name, and then created a new ability and gave it this name, as what Seal of Righteousness did in Vanilla WoW was added extra holy damage to your attacks, could not be cast on other players, and dealt holy damage if it was consumed by Judgment. So, in the live version of the game, Paladins had three abilities that only worked on Undeads, but they had one more in the beta, making them the ultimate anti-undead playable class. Although it makes sense why they just removed another one of their anti-undead abilities, because 
Abilities that only work on undeads are useless in like 90% of the game. And at number 3, we have Sleep. Funny enough, this ability was given to two classes in the beta of WoW, before being changed to basically hibernate and given to druids. And what it did was, on a 1.5 second cast time, with no cooldown, you could just put an enemy target to sleep for 45 seconds. So, a pretty powerful CC. And it was originally given to priests, as again, there's even a codex in the game files that show that it can be learned by a priest at level 6. But in the beta, they decided to move this ability over to mages, and it worked exactly the same way. And there's even a Tome of Sleep in the game files, as it shows that mages could learn it at level 8. But then in patch 0.8, still in the beta, Sleep was changed into Polymorph for mages, and then Druids were given Hibernate in beta patch 0.12, which is an ability that can put a target to sleep, but only works on Beast and Dragons. And at number 2, we have a weird ability called Ethereal Form, which is a 5 minute cooldown ability that makes the user immune to physical damage, but unable to use physical abilities for 10 seconds. So, kind of like a Paladin's Blessing and Protection, full immunity to physical damage, but unable to attack. Or the old school version of it anyway, as I think the current version of Blessing and Protection does allow you to attack while it's on you. Anyways, it seems as if Ethereal Form was supposed to be a Shaman ability, as there's a tablet in the game files called the Tablet of Ethereal Form, and it shows that shamans could learn this ability at level 24. So it almost seems like the Shaman version of Blessing and Protection. And honestly, thematically, Ethereal Form seems like it makes more sense than Blessing and Protection for the kind of effect it provides with the downsides. Also, something interesting I found out while editing this video Ethereal Form was added to the game in Legion in the form of a PvP talent for shamans, and it functions very similar to how it did in the beta. Okay, and at number one, we're just gonna have a whole bunch of other shaman abilities, because when I first started making this video, I didn't actually know which classes a lot of these abilities came from, so I just put a lot of the shaman ones at number one, because there seemed to be a lot of them at the time, and then it ended up a couple of the other ones earlier on the list also happened to be shaman abilities, but whatever. So, first up we have Group Astral Recall, which on a 15 minute cooldown will send everyone in the caster's group back to their Hearthstone location. So it's kind of like a mass Hearthstone cast without activating the cooldown of your group's Hearthstones. And seems like an incredibly good ability, as the Hearthstone cooldown was one hour long in vanilla. And the ability was never actually given to shamans, but funny enough, the icon used for this ability is known as Astral Recall Group in the game files, despite the fact that the icon is used for a lot of other things. Next up we have Invisibility Totem, which is a totem you can summon that would give everyone in your group invisibility for one minute. Although based on the wording of this ability, I assume it just worked while you were near the totem and didn't actually let you stay invisible outside of the vicinity of your totem. Now, this ability was never actually added to the game, but another Shaman Totem was added, later on in the beta, called Grace of Air Totem, which uses Invisibility Totem's icon, and in the game files, the icon for Grace of Air Totem is known as Invisibility Totem, which means Invisibility Totem was added to the game files first. Next up we have Shock, or Lightning Shock as it was called later on in the beta, which is very similar to the Shock spells that Shamans eventually got in the live version of the game where they were all instant cast, had a 20 yard range, 6 second cooldown abilities that shared a 6 second cooldown between them. And they all did something different, whereas Shock has all of these features except it only just does nature damage, and has no indication that it shared a cooldown with other abilities. Which leads me to believe this was just the very first iteration of the Shock system they had in the game, and then they removed this one and then added in the 3 Shaman Shocks they eventually got. Or maybe this one was just an extra shock on top of the other three. And next up we have Lightning Storm, which is an AoE lightning ability that you would cast on a targeted area and then just leave it alone. There are mobs in the game who have an ability very similar to this, and the icon they use for Lightning Storm in the beta is also named Lightning Storm, although I don't think any other players can actually use this icon so it doesn't really matter like it does for the other ones I mentioned. And lastly, we have Molten Blast, which is a spammable fire-based damaging ability with no cooldown and a lower cast time than Lightning Bolt. 
and I guess it would make sense why they removed a second castable spell with no cooldown, as the class didn't really need to have two of them. And I assume they later incorporated this ability into the Lava Burst ability shamans eventually got in Wrath of the Lich King. And unlike a lot of these abilities, Molten Blast was actually given to shamans to test in the beta, and then it got removed in beta patch 0.8. Alright, and that's it for all of the abilities in the beta that didn't make it to live. Or I guess, not all of them. There's still a lot more, I just chose a lot of the more interesting ones, and ones that I hadn't already covered in other videos except for a choice few. So, if you have any other ideas for videos just like this one, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments.